Nathan Mayer Rothschild. And I know you've probably heard a dozen conspiracy theories about him, but don't worry, this is not a conspiracy theory video. I'm purely talking about actual proven historical events. So Nathan was born in 1777 in Germany. And what am I doing? Sorry, you don't care about his life story. You just want to know about the event. So I'll skip into that. But before I do that, I have to explain what a government bond is, as government bonds was the metric that he used to accomplish this feat. So what are government bonds? Think of them as debts that the government is owing to the holder of that bond whether it be an individual, an institution, or even a foreign country. Now, for example, if you had a 10-year government bond with a 5% interest rate, that would mean that in 10 years, you'll be given that $1,000 government bond back, and then for every year in between those 10 years, so year one, two, three, four, five, etc., you'll be given $50. And so for investing $1,000, you'd be given back $1,500 over a 10 year period. So that's basically what a government bond is. And it is a very popular investment, especially in the early 1800s, because it is obviously a lot safer than stocks because it is backed up by the taxpayers of the country that the bond comes from. But now let's imagine this scenario. Imagine that there's two countries and they're both trying to sell you bonds. But the problem is though, is that they're fighting each other. Via mortal combat. So what's the problem with this scenario? Well, if you buy the bonds from the country that will end up losing that war, you're obviously never going to get that money back. And naturally, during times of war, as countries that are fighting the war will be very keen to sell bonds. Uh, they can actually use the money that you paid to buy that bond, and then they can use that to buy weapons, say ammo, soldiers' wages, new fighting equipment, which actually makes it more likely that they'll win that war. Being a bond investor during a time of a major war, you're essentially betting on who will win that war. And so to put this into a normal equivalent, Let's just imagine that the Broncos are playing the Bulldogs next weekend and I've got a good feeling that the Broncos are going to win and so I'll put a $10,000 bet on the Broncos to win. But instead of that just being a bet, the Broncos are then be able to use that $10,000 and then buy new boots for all the players. That essentially is the situation that bond investors are in during a war. Now, let's get back to Nathan's story. In the London Stock Exchange as far as bond trading, Nathan was actually kind of a big deal. And this is mainly because of his father, Mayor Rothschild, who started the world's first international bank. So Mayo is a bit of an interesting character himself and he probably deserves his own future video which I will actually upload in the future where he had five sons and instead of treating them like that any normal father would love, he treated them as potential heads of franchises which they all ended up becoming in separate offices throughout Europe. Anyway, Nathan was the head of the London branch. Meanwhile, in France, things are getting wild. The French Revolution had happened and Napoleon had basically united France to overthrow the monarchs and they're now trying to do the exact same thing to the rest of Europe. And for everyone else in Europe, they obviously saw this as not such a good thing for them, so they made an alliance to fight against the Napoleonic forces. This was the Napoleonic Wars. So Britain, Russia, Austria, Spain, and most of Scandinavia and a country called Prussia made an alliance. Prussia is basically just Poland, Germany and Lithuania combined into one single country. And yes, I am very much oversimplifying and brushing over a lot of the details of the Napoleonic Wars, but this video is not about the Napoleonic Wars. Now both sides of this war issued a lot of bonds because naturally they want to pay more soldiers, buy more ships, buy more cannons and buy more bullets. But as I mentioned before, there's obviously an issue if you were to choose to buy these bonds. And that issue being is that for whatever side loses, they'll probably never pay that bond investment back to whoever buys it. So anyway, in regards to the Napoleonic Wars, it was now starting to reach its critical point, the Battle of Waterloo. And for those of you who aren't really too familiar with European history, this is basically for Europe what Gettysburg was for the United States or what Kokoda was for the Anzacs in World War II. It was a battle that would most likely decide the fate of the rest of the war. And so whilst this battle was going on, Nathan was positioned in the London Stock Exchange and a very active bond trader. And furthermore to this, he owned the world's fastest courier service. So now, let's just imagine it's 1815 and you're currently wearing Nathan Rothschild's shoes. For the last month, all you've been hearing about is how Napoleon is very much likely to win the Battle of Waterloo. And everyone's talking about how the new Napoleonic Empire is going to grow and no one can stop him and everyone, everyone united together can't stop him and it's all doom and gloom. And then suddenly your courier knocks on your door and then tells you that, hey, guess what? Napoleon is defeated. Wellington won. Britain's happy, Russia's happy, Prussia's happy, and also the government courier behind me, he's about a full day behind me. So here's your information and have a nice day. Now, what would you do if you're in Nathan's shoes in this situation? I'm assuming that you would have decided to have bought all the English bonds that you could have bought because you had inside information that Britain and its allies had won, which would hence increase the price of British bonds. But this isn't actually what Nathan did. 
So upon hearing this news, he sold every English bond that he had. And the reason that he did was because he knew that other people knew that he had the world's fastest courier service. And so this started a rumour that Napoleon had actually won the Battle of Waterloo. This rumour was spreading like wildfire across the London Stock Exchange and across all of the United Kingdom. And I'll put you into an ordinary investor's shoes. So let's just imagine you've invested your life savings into these English government bonds. And on the upside, if things go well, you'll get about between 3 to 6% per year. However, if Napoleon had actually won and those rumours were true, you'd lose the entire thousand dollars. So even if you're not 100% convinced that these rumours are true, you'd most likely be very likely to sell those bonds just because the potential upside does not justify the potential downside. And so this is what many investors in the London Stock Exchange did. It caused a massive government bond market crash on that day. And so the market crashed, everything fell basically to almost zero. And then it was this moment, that Nathan did the 180. I, oh, good sir, would like to buy some English oh, hi bonds. Nathan. How many government bonds would you like to buy for me right now? How many? All of them. And so he bought all the bonds at very much dirt cheap prices, and then the official government courier arrived to London the next day and passed on the news that Napoleon had been defeated and, and English bonds are very safe. But by the time that everyone knew this to be a fact, Nathan Rothschild pretty much had well, almost all of them. And so on this single day, he went from being like a little bit rich to the world's richest man. And these bonds continued to appreciate for another two years, which is when he sold out of most of them. Because it took two years for the war to actually be fully finalized and just to, yeah, well, no, no war ends on a single day, even though you can tell he's won a war on a single day. In regards to this whole move, Nathan Rothschild was very famously quoted as saying, Buy when the cannons are firing and sell when the trumpets are blowing. And so about two years later, the war is well and truly over, things are stable and the bond prices are pretty much at as high as at what they're going to get. But now going back to the shoes of an ordinary investor, Imagine that you actually had one of these English bonds and then you're tricked out of selling it out of this false rumor that Nathan Rothschild had started. I mean, you'd be furious. And of course, many people were furious at Nathan Rothschild when he pulled this very sneaky move. I mean, doing something like this, it's, it's almost as bad as watching an entire YouTube video and then not giving them a like or subscribe, even though you've watched the entire video. I mean, who would do such a thing? So naturally, I think it's fair to say that Nathan Rothschild was not exactly the most popular person amongst not only traders, but just the general populations. And it is, it's actually kind of sad because the actions of this individual ended up being a story that was told over and over again in anti-Semitic propaganda where they basically blamed an entire group of peoples just for this action of this one individual and it's used as a lot of anti-Semitic propaganda in the lead up to World War II and we all know how that played out. Now at the time of his death his net worth was 0.62% of the UK's entire GDP. And so to put that into terms of today's equivalent, Britain was the superpower of the world at the time. So if you look at 0.62% of the United States' GDP today, just as a modern day equivalent, that would be a roughly about 140 billion US dollars. And also bear in mind as well that he didn't invent anything. He didn't pioneer any, any new technology. He basically just invested in stuff. That's a story about how a German man in his late 30s ended up becoming the richest man in the world from the actions taken on a single day. Anyway, I really hope you liked this video. And if you want to hear more stories like this or stories about some of the cool stuff that's under R&D investment right now, feel free free to click on any of these two thumbnails that are popping up uh, one in front of my face and the other one next to my face.